Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Uh, welcome to the course on biostatistics and design of experiments. Um, we completed uh, what we want to talk about in screening designs and um, we started on the second order designs. Second order designs are generally done after you screen all the unwanted factors and come down to a li limited number of factors. Second order designs are quadratic in nature, so we can develop uh, uh, regression models which has uh, uh, second order terms, which has uh, square terms uh, and so on actually. The first one we looked at is called the central composite design. So, in the central composite design um, I mentioned in suppose you take a 2 power 3 type of uh, design that means 3 factors to 2 levels 2 raised to the power 3 design. So, what you have? You have a cube 2 raised to the power is 3 is 8 exponents 2 into 2 into 2. So, this could be factor 1, this could be factor 2, this could be factor 3. So, we have 8 experiments. Then we add one extra experiment in the center, then we also add 6 experiments um, away from the phase of the cube, okay. this is the phase of the cube, so away from it. So, you have 6 phases for a cube, so you have 6 experiments. So, this adds up to 8 plus 1, 9 plus 6 that gives you 15 experiments. And by doing 15 experiments, you are changing each of the factor 5 levels. This is better than uh, a 3 power 3 type of uh, design, a full factorial design with 3 levels and uh, 3 factors that will be 3 into 3 into 3 is 27, whereas with 15 experiments, um, I am able to change each of the factor 5 levels, whereas a 3 power 3 design. Uh, will change each of the factor only 3 levels. Okay? So, that way this is extremely powerful. Then we have this uh, box uh, Benhan design, this is also similar to that, only thing is instead of uh, the corner points, it takes the points at the edges of the cube, okay? at the edges of the cube, okay? that is the only difference. Okay? So, it does not have the corners, it takes the edges of the cube. Um, so, let us go back. So, suppose if we have a 2 by 2 um, system that is 2 raised to the power 2, 2 factors only, you have 4 ex experiments at the corners that is the factorial points, then 1 experiment in the center and then you pick up 4 experiments outside this square. Okay? This we call it alpha, alpha greater than 1. If alpha is equal to 1, it will be lying exactly at the edges. Okay? Okay, then that is like your plus 1, 0, minus 1 type of experiment. Okay? Whereas, in the alpha case, what we are doing is we are having plus 1, 0, minus 1. In addition, we have plus alpha and minus alpha for each of the parameters. Do you understand? Now, the question is how do I decide on the alpha? So, it has been found that alpha um, square root of the number of parameters this way is most optimum. That means, if it is a 2, 2 raised to the power 2, then alpha should be 1.414. So, if your uh, uh, square has a side of 1, then alpha should be 1.414, okay? that will be a point. So, the experiments here is uh, plus 1, 0, minus 1, uh, plus 1.414, minus 1.414 for each of the parameter that is how it will or alpha you call it. So, as I, uh, as I said generally it has been found square root of uh, number of parameters gives you the um, best optimum results. So, if it is a 3 parameter problem we will do square root of 3, if it is a, that is 1.732, if it is a 6 dimension square root of 6 that is 2.44. So, this is yeah, a good number to have for alpha. Okay, so, uh, uh, if you compare it with your uh, 3k factorial design. Okay, so, for a 2 factor, 3 level, 3 raised to the power 2, 3 into 3 is 9, CCD also gives will give you 9 that is for 2 factorial. Okay? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Right? So, 
the number of experiments is the same, but like last time I told you if I am doing a, a factorial 2 raised to the power 3, I am looking at each factor only at 3 levels, right. Whereas, when I use a CCD, I am looking at each factor at 5 levels. So, I will get better non-linear relationship. Now, let us go to 3 factor problem, the 3 levels, 3 power 3, um, 3 power 3 is 3 into 3 into 3, that will come out to be uh, 27 experiments. Whereas, with CCD, okay, with CCD, I can do 15 experiments, 1, this is the 2 power 3, 8 experiment, then center and then 6 star points, 15 experiments. You see, I am reduced experiments dramatically. Now, go to 4, 3 raised to the power 4, 81 experiments. CCD, I just do 25 experiments, 5 factors, 3 raised to the power 4, 243 experiments, whereas I get 43 experiments in CCD. So, number of experiments goes down dramatically, it is got lower variance because I am looking at different levels of each of these factors. Of course, I can go to fractional factorial of this, we will look at a number of experiments also as we go along when we do a fractional factorial uh, of uh, 3k. The box Benken design for 3 factors is uh, given like this, so it is at 3 levels, so we have uh, uh, minus 0 and plus. So, as you can see here, we have um, minus, minus 0, minus plus 0 and so on. So, there are uh, 15 experiments uh, in this particular set. Okay. Uh, basically, what you are doing is, you are doing experiments at these uh, places, these uh, 4 corners, plus you have a central run, okay. we are doing 3 central runs and then we are also doing experiments at these phases. So, there will be um, 6 phases actually. Okay. So, 8 corners, 6 phases okay. and then we have doing at the center. Um, it can be represented in this short form uh, A s plus or minus, B s plus or minus and C in 0 that will make up 4 experiments because A at plus and then A at minus, B at plus and B at minus. Then we do uh, a plus or minus, C plus or minus and B will be in 0. That means, A plus or minus, C plus or minus. So, that is again 4 experiments. Then A will be in 0 and B and C plus or minus, plus or minus. That will be 4 experiments and uh, 3 experiments at the central point. So, they all add up to 15. Um, this is called a shorthand notation and uh, this is the normal uh, for which uh, we are used to. Okay. So, when we talk about uh, say, uh, plus or minus, plus or minus, plus or minus um, for A and B and C as 0, this is exactly this. The first 4 experiments are A going both plus or minus, B going both plus or minus and C going 0 and the fifth experiment is 0, 0, 0 that is the central point. So, we have 3 places where we have the experiments done at the central point. So, this adds up to 15 experiments. So, suppose we have uh, 4 factors the box Benken design, 4 factors namely A, B, C, D. Again the same approach, we have um, A plus or minus, B plus or minus, C and D are maintained at 0. So, that adds up to 4 experiments. Then we have A and B at 0, C and D on plus or minus, plus or minus that adds up to 4 experiments and then this is at the center point. So, that comes to 1 experiment and then uh, we do A and D at plus or minus. B and C at 0, that is 4 experiments and then B and C at plus or minus and A and D are maintained at 0, that is 4 experiments and then 1 central point and then uh, we do A at plus or minus, C at plus or minus that comes to 4 experiments, then B at plus or minus, D at plus or minus that comes to 4 experiments and again another central point uh, that is 1 experiment. So, they all add up to 27. So, this is called the shorthand notation and this is the longhand notation this is the normal we are used to it and um, so when you are doing a box Benken design for 4 factors, we have to do 27 experiments. So, when we are doing a box Benken design for 3 factors, we do 15 experiments. Um, so, if you are doing a 5 parameters that means A or 5 factors A, B, C, D, E, okay, then uh, we can develop in the same way uh, the shorthand notation is given and you end up with 46 experiments. Okay. So, we have A, B plus or minus, C, D, E are maintained at 0, like that you keep on uh, varying and then uh, you also have these center points 
So, you do totally 6 experiments for 10 center points. So, this comes to 46 experiment. So, um, you need to do 46 experiments if you want to do the box bend gun type of design. Okay, now, let us do the CCD which is called the box Wil Wilson design. Okay, the CCD is called the box Wilson design. In CCD what do you do? You do the factorial and then um, we do the center points and then we do the star points or we call it alpha points, they call it alpha points. So, if you are doing a, uh, the factorial could be a 2 power 3 or it could be a 2 power 3 minus 1. Okay, let us look at the full factorial. So, uh, we have the 8 experiments for the factorial, this is the, the first 8 experiments of the factorial. So, we have uh, all the combinations for ABC that is 8 and then uh, we do Okay, these are the center points. So, we will be doing 6 experiments for the center points. We will, I will tell you why you need to do 6 experiments and then we do the star points or the alpha points. That means, A at plus alpha and minus alpha, B at plus alpha minus alpha, C at plus alpha minus alpha that comes to 20 experiments. Okay. Uh, why do you need to do 6 at the center point? There is a formula which is like this, N C that is number of center points is equal to 4 square root of N f plus 1 minus 2 n, where n f is the number of factorial experiments. So, in this particular case, we are doing 8 experiments that is 2 power 3 full factorial. So, that comes to 8 plus 1 9 square root of 9 is 3. So, 12 minus 2 n is the number of factors, okay, number of variables or factors uh, that, okay. So, here we have uh, 12 and here we have 2 into 3 is 6. So, 12 minus 3 6 is 6. So, we are doing 6 experiment. We can do the same box Wil Wilson, but the instead of factorial, we can do a fractional factorial that means 2, 3 minus 1. That means, we are doing only 4 experiments for the factorial region and then uh, the remaining is the center points and then plus alpha minus alpha plus alpha minus alpha plus alpha minus alpha. Here we are doing only 3 center points because according to this formula 4 square root of n of here is 4. So, 4 plus 1 is 5 square root of 5 is 2.236 multiply by 4. Um, so, that is about 10 and then minus uh, the number of uh, n is 3 here. So, you will end up with 3 center point. Okay. So, depending upon the number of uh, runs you are doing in the factorial um, the formula is given where you substitute that. So, if it is a 2 power 3 full factorial, we will put n f as 8. If it is a um, 2 power 3 minus 1 fractional factorial, we will put uh, n f as 4. That will give you an idea about the center points. Okay. So, this is how you build up the box uh, Wilson um, C C D. Okay. Um, okay. So, we have looked at uh, different types of 3 level designs, um, which are also called uh, non-linear designs. So, we have the 3 k minus q, um, this is exactly like your 2 n minus uh, q type of thing. Okay. It can be used for qualitative or quantitative factors, we can use it for linear and quadratic effects. Okay. You can also estimate linear and quadratic interactions, that means uh, I can put uh, um, a square or a into b type of uh, uh, terms in my regression. Okay. Okay, so, this can be done actually. Uh, now, we looked at box uh, Benkan design. So, we can use it for quantitative factors. Okay. Um, of course, uh, we can also use it for linear, quadratic, two-way linear interactions and so on. Then we came to CCD. Okay. Um, the advantage of CCD is it can look at uh, almost uh, 5 different levels because we are having star plus alpha plus and alpha minus unlike any other uh, um, other designs we are talking about. Okay. We can estimate linear effects, quadratic effects, two way linear interactions and so on. Then the full factorial 3 raised to the power um, k. Okay. So, we are going to have large number of experiments here. We can use it for qualitative or quantitative, we can use it for linear quadratic effect effects, also all types of interactions, two, way two level interactions, three way interactions and so on actually. This is a full factorial design. Okay. So, uh, this is a comparative table. Um, uh, full factorial, if I am having um, k is equal to 3, that means 3 factors or 3 variables, 3 raised to the power 3, 3 into 3 into 3 is 27 and then if it is 4, sorry, uh, 3 into 3 into 3 into 3, 81. So, it grows up exponentially. If you come to CCD, 
uh, if you assume a fractional a factorial uh, in for the central portion and then we consider the um, uh, center points as well as the star points, we will have 13 experiments. If you remember this, okay, if you remember this, we have 13 experiments, right. So, um, we can have 13 whereas box, box Benkan will give you 15 experiments. Uh, if you have 4 vari variables, then uh, we can have a 27 experiment that is uh, we can build up a one third factorial type of design, uh, box bench gun gives you 27, this tells you how many center points and CCD uh, fractional factorial for the um, central portion will give you 20 experiments and there will be 4 center points like that you know. So, as you can see uh, CCD appears to be very efficient okay when compared to any of these design box Benkan or uh, 3k minus q or full factorial design actually okay and um, also you can see uh, we can get center points that is very very important uh, both these designs um, give enough number of center points which will help you to estimate the errors okay. So, CCD appears to be the best if you are looking at a quadratic type of model or higher order models. So, we looked at a large number of uh, um, design strategies, we looked at uh, the, um, the screening design strategy, then we looked at uh, the uh, second order design strategy, here we have the box Benkan, we have the central composite designs, we have the of course, the full factorial 3 level designs, then we have the fractional factorial 3 k minus q type of design and so on. So, uh, once we have uh, these uh, designs, what do we do? We can uh, perform an ANOVA, okay. Uh, once we perform an ANOVA, we will know which factors are important. We can you look at whether any interactions are important. Um, then we can go into regression, we can uh, develop uh, regression relationships, okay, uh, and then uh, get a model. Uh, if it is a second order model, that means if it is a quadratic model, we can optimize that model. Um, um, by doing an optimization, we can find out the best set of parameters at which say my yield is maximum. Uh, then I can go and test it out in my um, actual reactor, bioreactor or uh, whatever system I am looking at to see whether I got the same answer as uh, predicted. So, ultimately you want to optimize or maximize your productivity, maximize the yield of uh, the metabolite maximize the yield of biomass. So, obviously, once you perform your design calculation, you shortlist the best set of parameters, you identify which parameters are going to play an important role or significant, uh, eliminate the other parameters, then you develop a regression relationship and uh, with the regression relationship, uh, you um, optimize your uh, uh, product yield. Um, that means, you change the parameter values theoretically uh, using the regression relationship you change the parameter value and find out the best set of uh, uh, parameter values which give you the uh, maximum yield and then you can go and test it out in your lab and uh, you can say this is the best uh, type of uh, um, conditions at which I should operate my bioreactor. So, this is how the sequence of events take place uh, when you talk uh, looking at the um, experimental design uh, strategy. Okay, so, that means, I need to have a good knowledge about, uh, about my um, regression, what type of regressions to use and uh, what type of uh, um, models I need to use and, uh, and so on actually. Okay, so, uh, let us look at uh, some of those uh, regression approaches by which one goes about uh, doing uh, the modeling. Okay. So, what is the regression analysis? Okay. So, regression methods uh, are used to develop simple empirical models. So, we can get y is equal to uh, a plus b x 1 plus c x 2, where x 1, x 2 are my parameters. If I have a second order model, I can use it for a equal to b x 1 plus c x 1 square plus d x 1 x 2 and so on. We can get some 
actual understanding of the physical phenomena, we can uh, correlate design variables. Okay. Uh, so, we can do so many things with the regression models and uh, the typical regression methods use a simple regression method, multiple regression method, multiple linear models, partial models, backward regression and non-linear models, uh, second order models or uh, and so on actually. So, regression we can do so many things with the regression models. Okay. Um, so, regression can help us to understand which factors are important, of course we can do it through ANOVA also. Um, as I have been talking about it in the past so many classes. Okay, so, it can of course, the regression also tells you depending upon the uh, parameter which you get which uh, ones are good. We can use it for predictive like I said I can optimize the conditions and then I can say uh, if I operate uh, at this temperature, this pH, this carbon amount I will get maximum yield. How do I do that? I can take the regression model, I can uh, uh, modify um, the, the conditions and see whether I am able to increase the productivity that is called simulation and it is that is called prediction. So, you come up with the new operating points. We can use it for estimating the coefficients, what will be the constant that gets multiplied with temperature, what is the constant that gets multiplied with the pH. Um, the constants also tell you. Uh, something very, very important. It tells you uh, what is the effect of each of these, uh, what is the quantum of effect or the weightage of each of these parameters on my total um, yield for example, if that is what uh, is my desired. Okay. So, regression has lot of uh, uh, uses, it not only developing an equation, it can be used for later optimization, simulation, model predictions, new scenario generation. Uh, looking at which factors are important, which factors are not important, uh, whether some factors are positively correlated, whether some factors are negatively correlated um, and so on actually. So, regression analysis is extremely important if uh, one wants to do um, a proper analysis. Okay. Uh, so, what are the approaches? We pick a regression model. So, do I go for a linear regression model? Do I go for a non-linear regression model? Do you have um, and x1 square, do I have x1 into x2 that is interactions, x1 square means it is a quadratic, x1 in x2 means it is an interaction. So, I need to decide do I go for a linear model, non-linear model, then you get gather the data of course, you collect enough data, uh, you know which parameters are important after performing a screening design, then you perform the regression analysis. That means, you actually uh, fit your data to the model you have selected and then estimate those constants A, B, C, whatever it is, okay, uh, the constants of this regression model. So, you need to decide on which model to consider, that is very, very important. So, a priori you say I will take a linear, multi-linear model, that means A plus B x 1 plus C x 2 plus D x 3 like that, that is a multi-linear model or I will say I will take a single parameter quadratic model A plus B x 1 plus C x 1 square or I will take a two parameter model with quadratic terms that means A plus B x 1 plus C x 2 plus D x 1 x 2 and E x 1 square plus F x 2 square like that you know. So, you need to a priori decide, but later on when you do the regression analysis depending upon your A, B, C, D you may neglect some of the parameters, okay. if the parameter values uh, are very, very small. You may do that, but you need to anyway consider a priori what type of model you will do, okay. that is very, very important. Okay. Then you perform the regression analysis and you select the best model for your um, based on the R square, uh, based on the ANOVA. So, like that finally, you end up with the best uh, regression model for your um, system. So, regression is nothing but a curve fitting for a sim single parameter that means if uh, I am measuring flow as a uh, uh, sorry I am measuring pressure as a function of flow, flow is your uh, uh, independent variable, uh, your pressure <coughs> is your dependent variable. So, if it is a linear model I will have y equal to a plus uh, 
that is a pressure is equal to um, A plus B into flow. If it is a second order model, I may say pressure is equal to A plus B flow plus C flow square. So, when I fit the data, I can estimate A, B, C. Okay? So, in this particular case, I may think it is uh, not a linear, it is a non-linear. So, I will take uh, A plus B flow plus C flow square. For a two parameter of course, suppose I have x here, y here, I am z is my independent variable. So, I will have a linear model will be y is equal to a plus b x 1 plus c x 2, a non-linear model will be a is e, y is equal to a plus b x 1 plus c x 1 square plus d x 2 plus z x 2 square plus f x 1 x 2 also if you think uh, there is an interaction. Okay, and so on actually. Then you estimate the constants A, B, C, D, E, F. By fitting the data, you determine the error. What is error? Uh, what is predicted by the model minus uh, what is actual, square it up, sum it up, that is the error sum of squares. So, from there you perform an ANOVA and then you see whether the model is really uh, predicting the data or not. Okay. So, that is quite straightforward and that is what you do in your um, regression analysis. So, basically it is a curve fitting for a single parameter curve fitting. So, it is easy in a one dimensional system that means single parameter or even a two dimensional system to visualize, but if it becomes higher dimension we cannot really visualize. We have to look at the error sum of squares and then uh, make a conclusion whether the error sum of squares is very large for one model. I have another model, I get another error sum of squares. I can compare both of them and uh, say yes they are very different or no they are not very different. But if I am having a very simple um, single parameter or a two parameter model, I can even visually plot them and I can say yes this model looks good. Okay. But for larger systems it becomes more difficult, you will not be able to um, tell uh, unless you actually calculate the error sum of squares. Okay. So, that is very very important. And we will go up down as we go along to uh, and I will tell you how to calculate uh, these various parameters and um, how to estimate uh, the, um, the constants of regression, uh, the, uh, the multiplication factor or the slope of regression line and so on. And Excel also has that uh, option uh, to determine both the slope as well as the um, intercept for the regression line. Okay. Um, so, if we can visualize the data, there are different uh, uh, relationships that are possible. Suppose I take a parameter um, x here that is the independent variable and this is my dependent variable y. Okay. I can have different types of uh, relationship. That means, uh, y and x are highly correlated. Okay. As you can see, as x increases, y also increases. Whereas, here if you see this data, as x increases, y is all over the place. So, this is a 0 correlation, this is the best correlation. So, in between you can have different numbers possible, okay. in between you can have different numbers possible and different figures. Look at these figures, not at all correlated, uh, little correlated, highly correlated. So, you can have uh, correlation coefficient um, varying between 0 to 1 and they call if it is 1 uh, as x increases y also increases. If it is minus 1 as x increases y decreases. So, you can have both the situation um, the, li uh, the direct correlation or indirectly related or uh, positively related negatively related and this is called the correlation coefficient and I will tell you how to estimate the correlation coefficient also. But uh, um, it becomes very easy if you have one parameter. <laughs> to calculate the correlation coefficient, okay, there is something called a covariance. Covariance tells you the strength of the correlation between two or more sets of random variables x and y. So, how do you calculate? It is given by this formula. Covariance x y summation of i is varying from 1 to n 
x a minus x bar, x bar is the average of all the x's, y a minus y bar, y bar is average of all these y's divided by n minus 1, it is called the covariance, it tells you the strength of the correlation and the correlation coefficient is given by covariance of x y divided by sigma x sigma y, sigma x is what is sigma x? x i minus x bar square divided by n minus 1, what is sigma y square? y a minus y bar square divided by n minus 1, summation. Okay? So, correlation is a scaled version of covariance, you are scaling it down with respect to the sigma that is standard deviation x and standard deviation y. Okay? So, um, as I said, uh, once you collect the data, we need to perform a regression analysis and before the regression analysis, we actually look at the correlation coefficient between x and the y. That means, the independent variable and the dependent variable. So, if I have many x's, that means, I have temperature, pH, um, carbon amount okay? um, and for each one of them, I have the yield data. So, I can perform a correlation analysis, I can calculate the correlation coefficient between temperature and the yield, between pH and the yield, between uh, carbon amount and yield to see whether my correlation coefficient value is very high or very low, whether they are correlated or not correlated. Okay? So, you can do that as your first step to analyze your data. Okay? So, we will continue on this uh, uh, regression analysis in the next class also. Thank you very much.